Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture with ISO IEC 1725-2017 edition and now 7-8 reporting of results. Reporting of results is very important for any lab because it's the final product of the lab to the customer so it should be prepared and reviewed well by the specified persons. Calibration reports from calibration laboratory or test reports from any other lab considered as accredited certificates from accredited lab. So it should be prepared and reviewed well before giving to the customer. And these reports such as calibration report from calibration laboratory, testing report, and also sampling report if the lab is responsible for sampling. 781 general requirements for reporting of results. 7811 results shall be reviewed and authorized prior to release to the customer. But who is responsible to review and authorize these reports? As mentioned in 625, the lab shall have procedures and retain records for authorization of personnel who is responsible to authorize these reports and in 626 the lab shall authorize personnel specific personnel to perform specific lab activities who has more experience uh, to report review and authorize of results and the sample will be distributed between different units inside the lab after analysis of the sample by the specified person or by the analyst he will send the result to the technical lead of the unit who will review the results to ensure that the results are valid and he will authorize the results then all results from each unit for this sample will be collected in the final report after review and authorize the results by the technical lead of each unit the results shall be provided in a report this report such as test report or calibration certificate in calibration laboratory or sampling report if the lab is responsible for sampling and that report shall be simple and clear for the customer to be easy for interpretation of the results and shall include all informations agreed with the customer and necessary for interpretation of results and you should know that all issued reports shall be retained as a technical record so final report is a technical record and the not two reports can be hard or electronic electronic if you have limbs inside the lab so the analyst will send the result to the technical lead of the unit through limbs to review and approve and also can be hard or paper documents so paper documents or paperwork still recognized in this edition and 7813, as I mentioned before, results shall be reported in a clear and simplified way for the customer to be easy for interpretation of results. And any information listed in 782 up to 787 for reporting of results from ISO documents that's not reported to the customer shall be readily available. When the customer need these information, he can find. So all results shall be reviewed and approved by the technical lead for each unit. Then reporting in a very simple and clear way for the customer to be easy for interpretation of the results. And all information mentioned from 782 up to 787 in reporting of results shall be readily available for the customer if he requested, if it's not written or recorded in the report. Then we have common requirements for reports. We have test reports, calibration certificate, and sampling report. 7821 each report shall include the following points. Title, at the beginning title, title of the report. If it's test report or final report or calibration certificate for calibration laboratory or sampling report. And also the name and address of the lab. 
and also location of performance of lab activity and this is very important to be mentioned in mobile facility or customer facility or sites away from the lab permanent facility or inside the lab because if you perform the lab activity inside the lab or outside the lab in customer facility or mobile facility or sites away from the lab permanent facility you shall ensure that all requirement of this document of ISO 17025 2017 edition and other guidelines you follow applied in this facility so as mentioned before if the lab has any activity any activity in mobile facility or customer facility the lab shall ensure that all requirements of this document apply to ensure the validity of results and unique identification for the report that all contents are recognized and the clear identification of the end you need to identify the report by a specific number or specific ID to be easy to be followed after that from the beginning up to giving the final report and all components of the report also will be easy identified all test required for this sample will be easy ident identified so unique identification that all components are recognized and a clear identification of the end of the report and this can be a certificate number a report ID or code so the report for the sampling or calibration will be unique and not duplicated this number for this report or for this sample calibration certificate number or test report ID the name and the contact information of the customer in calibration laboratory calibration certificate shall include information about the customer so customer information shall be identified in labs under authority under organization or company or any government also customer shall be identified and there will be the customer will be the government or company or this authority so there will be logo for this company or government in private lab that depends on the customer requirement but it's better to be there and identification of the method used such as calibration testing procedure number for calibration laboratory sampling protocol or lab procedure standard operating procedure number standard procedure such as ASTM or reference method number that also shall be included in the final report but if you have different parameters for each sample different parameters shall be analyzed for each sample it will be difficult to add the reference method number of these informations for each parameter so that will be mentioned in your in your uh, SOPs or your quality manual so it will these informations will not be included in the report but it will be readily available for the customer if he requested and also we have description unambiguous identification and when necessary condition of the item as I said before report shall be clear and shall include all required informations and from these informations we have also condition of the sample condition of the sample shall be mentioned in the final report especially if the lab not responsible for sampling you will mention in the final report the lab not responsible for sampling and if you receive the sample by the customer in a condition which doesn't meet the required condition you shall inform the customer that may affect the validity of results and if he insists to analyze the sample in this case the lab will analyze the sample but you shall mention the condition of the sample received in the final report to save your lab also the date of receipt of the test or calibration item when you receive the sample need to be analyzed or equipment need to be calibrated in calibration laboratory the sampling date and time shall be recorded before giving the sample to the analyst because this is very critical to the validity of results some samples have a shelf life after this shelf life cannot be analyzed and shall be changed by another sample because you will find some parameters will not be stable after specific time as example in microbiology some bacteria need to be analyzed in six hours after six hours cannot be analyzed because it will not be alive and other bacteria also need 24 hours and according to from bacteria to another bacteria and also in chemistry we find some chemicals 
or some analytes need to be analyzed in a specific time. After this time, cannot be analyzed. So you shall change the sample by another sample. So the date of receipt of the test or calibration item also, also shall be recorded in the report. And the date of performance of the lab activity. When you did or you perform the lab activity. And this point new added to this edition, testing date or calibration date for the equipment in calibration laboratory or sampling collection date and time also if the lab responsible for sampling. And after that we have the issue date of the report. When did you issue the report for this sample? After analysis the sample, sending the result to the technical lead of the unit. After that he reviewed and approved the result and issued the report. When did you issue the report? Even if it was the same date like the performance date. If you did the analysis for the sample and issued the report on the same date, most of them shall be recorded in the report. And also reference to the sampling plan or sampling procedure used by the lab or other bodies. If you are responsible for sampling or if you have third party to collect the samples for your lab, you shall have the reference used for preparing the sampling plan or sampling procedures used to collect the samples. So for this point, as I said before, if you will not record every point, you shall have all information available for the customer when he need that or when he requests these informations. So you shall have the reference used for collection of samples or for preparing the sampling plan. And a statement to the effect that the results relating only to the items tested, calibrated or sampled. So that can be only a statement will be written in the final report that the results were related only to the items tested or calibrated in case of calibration laboratory or sampled in case of sample collection. And results will be with the units of measurement. Addition to deviation or exclusion from the method, if you did any deviation to the method before analysis of the sample, that also shall be recorded. But for this point, because if you did any deviation to the method before analysis, you shall inform the quality lead and that there will be a process for that. And the technical lead also of the unit shall authorize this deviation. So you will have all information available related to this deviation in different forms and that shall be approved by the technical lead of the unit and the quality lead also of the lab. So you don't need to record that in the report, but this information shall be available if the customer need and you shall identify the person authorizing the report instead of signature only in 2005 edition in 2005 edition signature only was enough but now you shall identify the name of the person in the report authorizing the report to be clear and clear identification where results are from external provider if you have temporary subcontract with another lab to analyze the samples for a specific customer you shall inform him in, in advance as I mentioned before in review of request tenders and contract and that will be mentioned in the contract between the lab and the customer so you shall inform him in advance before analysis of samples and he, he shall approve that so you don't need to record this in the final report so whatever I mentioned before were common requirements for any report and the lab shall be responsible for all information provided in the report and that's logic the lab shall have data to ensure whatever information is provided in the report except when the information is provided by the customer so any data provided by the customer shall be mentioned in the final report as example if the lab not responsible for the sampling stage and the samples collected by the customer you shall state that in the final report that the results related to the sample as received by the customer. So you are responsible only for analysis of the sample, not for the sampling. That was the end of our lecture for today. In the next lecture, inshallah, I'll explain other specific requirements for reports. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.